Hello everyone and welcome to this getting started video about the wood framing CLT software. We want to make it as simple as possible for you to try out our CLT solution on your own and in this video I'll go through the basic steps to follow so that your use of the software is as hassle free as possible. Since these instructions are meant to simplify testing of wood framing CLT, I will use our sample configurations and families throughout. Just keep in mind that all these sample rules can be modified to your own needs and standards. In the wood framing CLT ribbon, there are six top level functions. In the frame window, you'll find functionality needed for modeling frames with CLT panels. In the elements window, you'll find functionality needed for creating connections common for CLT structures. In the documents window, you'll find functionality needed for numbering elements and creating shop drawings. You'll use link type to create links for walls, floors, and roofs. Under configurations, you'll enter create and modify all needed rules for modeling, numbering, dimensioning, and so on. And under settings, you'll load all needed families for CLT structures automatically, browse configuration files locations, and transfer element types and standards. So now let's start creating frames with CLT panels in Revit, from scratch. I will start by creating a new project from an empty Revit template. Before starting to work on this project, we will need to save it. Now we'll need to choose the sample families to be loaded into the current project. Wood Framing CLT provides sample metric and imperial families for creating frames with connections common for CLT structures, tag families, and sample schedules. If you'll be designing only the CLT structure, loading families from CLT catalogs is sufficient. And also, you can load optional families. These are additional families for creating additional floor, roof, wall layers like timber, secondary frames, horizontal or vertical nailers, battens, and so on. Additional schedules are sample schedules for floor, roof, and wall additional layers, and finish families are sample families for creating floor, roof, or wall finish layers like flooring, roofing, and siding. After loading, you'll find the families in the project browser, families under structural framing, structural connections, division profiles, annotation symbols, and generic model categories. Have in mind that all of these families are parametric, so you can very easily duplicate them and in the type properties, change their parameter values. And that is how you can expand the library. And now we are going to transfer the standards. Template project is a Revit file with sample wall, floor, and roof types, standards, and annotations. The template project feature allows users to transfer all needed information from a template project, eliminating the need to create wall, floor, and roof types and other needed elements or standards from scratch for every new project. So before working with the software, we recommend using these features. Template project location is the path to your template project. Wood framing CLT comes with a sample template project, which is mapped here automatically. When starting out, we recommend using the sample template project that comes with the software and is automatically mapped already. And later on, of course, you can create your own template project and map it right here. And now, since the template project is already mapped, we can transfer all wall, floor, roof types, standards, and annotations. So first, I'm going to transfer all the wall types from my template project, and I can transfer only the ones that have CLT in their name. I will do the same with the floors and with the roofs. And now we're going to transfer the standards. This functionality opens Revit's Transfer Project Standards dialog window. You then need to manually select various styles, types, and settings, which need to be transferred from the template project file into the current project. For a smooth workflow, we recommend that you select at least six options. Text types, view reference types, 
View Templates, Viewport Types, Dimension Styles, and Filters. And you can select more options if needed. And finally, let's transfer annotations. It loads and overrides tags, callout heads, section heads, section view templates, and title blocks, and copies legend views and schedules from the project that is defined in the template project location to the current project. And now, assuming that you already have the necessary sample families loaded, using load families, all types and standards transferred to the new current project, then you can move on to creating the architectural model to be automatically framed with CLT panels. The first step is to create the architectural model. We already transferred all the sample, wall, floor and roof types to our project so we can use them. For this example, I used wall and floor types with parts and dovetails. And in this example, I used wall and floor types with half lap. I also used a 3D CLT view template that was transferred to this project. In this view template, all the walls, floors and roofs are set to transparent so we could easily see the automatically generated parts later on. And after the model is created, we can start using the sample configurations to create the CLT panels. Let's start from creating a link. This example is with a wall, but the logic is the same for the floors and for the roofs. So first, I'm going to select a wall type, click on link type, and you can see that the window was opened with the wall type that I already selected. We can create different links for different wall, floor, or roof types. In the first three columns, you can see the structure of the wall that was created in Revit. Right now, I have only one layer because during this video, we will focus on the CLT structure. We should select the main frame for the framing layer. And under framing configuration, we should select a framing configuration with the definition of all framing parameters. A sample configuration that comes together with the CLT software was used here, but of course, you can create your own later on. Then also, we should tick frame mark, also split parts and split by, as CLT panels will be created as parts category in Revit. And finally, here we can choose the paneling configuration. And also exclude parts tick mark has to be turned off because the CLT panels will be created as parts and we don't want to exclude them. Now that I've created a link, I will click on OK. And now it's time to create the frame with the CLT panels. First, let's run the number types command, which will number all host elements, namely walls, floors, and roofs using a sample configuration. And that's it, all of the walls were numbered, so now I can select any wall from my project and you can see that it has a mark parameter value in it. Of course, you can modify the rules how the elements are numbered. And now we can simply select all of the walls, floors and roofs and click on Create Frame. Now the tool will distribute all of the structural framing elements that are predefined in the framing configurations and parts for the CLD panels will be split at the same time. So you can see that once we already have the rules created based on our own standards, the process is really fast. So I recommend to try out these sample configurations and then, of course, you can modify them based on your own needs. And you can see that in this example, CLD panels with a board connection were generated for exterior, interior walls, and also for the floor. And in this example, CLD panels with half lap connections were generated. After the frames are generated, we can modify them in a number of different ways by adding additional elements moving them, copying them, modifying the layout of the panels, how the openings are framed, updating the frames, and so on. And we will explore all of these options in the future videos. But now, let's move forward. Let's insert connections common for CLT structures. 
In the paneling configurations, we already predefined the configurations for structural connection elements. So for these wall types, we're going to insert dovetails, and for these, we're going to insert L and T connections. So now I will select all of the wall parts from both of these examples and use Auto Insert. And since the configurations are filled in in my parts, the tool will understand which configurations should be used. And that's it. Now we can take a look. You can see that I have a dovetail structural connection added between the two parts that are connecting in an L connection, and that's the case for all of my parts in this example. And here you can see a T connection. I can also isolate one of the parts so you could see how accurate all of the cuts are made. And in this example, half lap connections were created. Void structural connection elements were distributed to create these complex cuts for L and T connections. And again, let's isolate one of the parts and you can see that the cut was created. Now let's say that the modeling part is complete and we are ready to move on to the shop drawings. Some of the parameter values that are common for CLD structures can be entered manually before numbering the panels based on predefined rules. For example, I can enter visual quality for interior and exterior side. Also, I can predefine the green direction. If the tick mark is on, the green direction will be horizontal and if it's off, it will be vertical. I can also enter the unit number. It can represent separate buildings in the project or something else of that nature. So now I will select the parts from this example right here and I will fill in the unit number. Let's say this will be unit number one. I can also fill in the visual quality for the interior side and for the exterior side. I will create shop drawings as an example for two of these parts. So for one of these parts, I'll say that the green direction is horizontal and for the other one, it will be vertical so that you would see the difference. In the numbering rules window, you can choose all needed rules for various categories like walls, parts, structural framing and structural connection elements and their parameters, which should be filled in in a single configuration. Also, you're able to assign configurations that should be used with number types and number elements commands. So now, when we will run number elements command, all the elements will be numbered by sample configurations assigned in these numbering rules. So let's run the number elements. As you can see, the CLD part level was filled in automatically also, this part has a mark, which will be the assembly name. Also, it can see the host member mark, so in which wall it's located, and so on. After numbering the elements, we can select all needed parts and use insert tags. Now the tool will open a sample configuration for CLD panel tags, and when we'll click on insert details, the 3D tags will be added automatically. In these 3D tags, you can see the previously entered parameter values for visual interior and visual exterior qualities. These 3D tags are structural framing category elements that are only being used as tags. If you don't want to see these tags in the 3D view, you can hide them, but you should still insert them as we'll be using these 3D tags to tag panels when creating the shop drawings in the following step. If you do not insert them, then the panels will not have tags in the shop drawings. And of course, these are only sample configurations and can be adjusted to your needs later. And finally, you can select all numbered and tagged parts and use Create Assembly. First, I will create an assembly for a single part and as this is a wall panel I will use a sample CLD wall panel configuration. 
Now we can find the created assembly in the project browser under Assemblies, and all of these views and schedules were just generated automatically. You can see that the 3D view was created. Also, the elevation top view, where we can see the tag for the visual interior and exterior quality right here, and also the dimensions were added automatically based on the sample rules that can, of course, be modified. We also have a schedule where we can see the length, height, area, count, and element mass of the panel. Of course, these schedules can be modified as well. We also have an elevation front view where we can see the tag displaying the horizontal grain direction. We can also see the mark of the part, the visual quality, and again, all of the dimensions are added automatically. We also have the section view, and now we can create our own sheet. I will create the first sheet in my project by manually dragging and dropping the views to the sheet, and then later I will use it as a template. Now I will open the assembly configuration, CLT wall panel configuration, and go to Sheets. You can see that we can predefine a sheet template. And now I've created this sheet manually and I will say that I want to use this template for my future panels. I will save this configuration. And now I will create another assembly for this panel. And now the tool will generate all of the views and schedules that were predefined in the configuration and also it will create a sheet automatically based on the template sheet that we predefined. So now you can see that we have another assembly and again we have the 3D view, the elevation top view, the schedule, the elevation front view and this time you can see that the tag is showing us the vertical green direction, whereas previously we had a horizontal green direction. We also have a section view, and this time the sheet is generated automatically based on the previously created template. All sample configurations used in this video can be found and modified under configurations right here. And now I would like to invite you to download a free trial of the wood framing CLT software and test it out for yourself. You will have access to all of the sample families, configurations, and standards that you just saw during this video. You will be able to repeat the process. This video is meant to simplify testing of our wood framing CLT. So just keep in mind that all of these sample rules can be modified to your own needs and standards. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. AGA CAD, building BIM together.